Welcome to another edition of Carib Direct Diaspora News in Brief. This week, we catch up with the founder of Carib Direct Multimedia, who tells us about the passion needed to run a Caribbean-focused media company. Now, many a day I'd wake up before this and think, why am I doing this? Why don't I go and get a job like the rest of the normal human beings that are around me? We then speak to the founder of a beauty pageant designed especially for over 50s. It's not about beauty, it's about you being yourself and showing the younger people that you can still look good and feel good over 50. Starting or running a business is not easy and one of the essential attributes of a successful business person is passion. So we caught up with founder and CEO of Carib Direct Multimedia for some insights on how his company uses passion to serve the Caribbean nationals. This is the, the beautiful BEFTA Award. Wow, so gorgeous. Yeah? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Best community website. We had some serious contenders, Africans as well as Caribbeans. Okay. And um, I'm happy to say that since winning the award, the phones are ringing more. How did it feel having your name announced as the winner? I was shocked. I was totally gobsmacked. I mean, you know, I'm in this room filled with hundreds of people and everyone is getting awards and I'm thinking, this is not going to happen. It's Caribbean. I, as a matter of fact, I told my wife, grab your bag and let's go because it's not happening. Right. Um, but when they did announce it, you know, I felt this chill through my chest. I went up. I had no idea what I was going to say, um, said a few things that people said were great, but I think what happened there, it was like a chronicle sure. of all the things that I've done in my life um, that just culminated in this one experience. Right. Um, and what it tells me now is that we're actually doing something worthwhile. Right. You know, many a day I'd wake up before this and think, why am I doing this? Why don't I go and get a job like the rest of the normal human yeah. beings that are around me? Um, but this tells me that there are people out there that appreciate what Carib Direct is about and that I should continue. Tell us a little bit about how you got started with Carib Direct. Carib Direct was in many ways an accident. Um, somewhere in 2009 I was with another company doing outdoor advertising okay. and that company went under. And as a result I sat there thinking, well what am I going to do with myself? I'm over 40, I have a Caribbean uh, education. Um, much of my understanding of the UK is premised on my knowledge of the Caribbean. So I decided to go back to the basics, which is journalism. Right. Um, so I started Carib Direct by looking at what exists here in the UK for Caribbeans who are, in a sense, disconnected from the Caribbean region itself, and came up with the idea that I should provide news and information for Caribbeans here who want to know what's happening back home and for Caribbeans back home to find out what's happening here. Right, so um, how do you run Carib Direct as a business? Uh, that's interesting because, um, you know, in businesses you have debits and credits, uh, liabilities and, and assets and so forth. Well, Carib Direct, we are no different to any other business. Um, the only difference is we're not making the amount of money that we think that we deserve for the work that we do. Um, but it's pretty much run on a daily basis. Um, my wife and I are the main principals in the business. And what drives us really is the fact that we love to inform and educate the Caribbean community. Um, and as a result of that, we published articles on a daily basis from Sunday to Sunday. The site's always fresh with new articles. And that is what makes us different from the rest. And what would you say makes you unique amongst your competitors? Because you were saying that, you know, you had a lot of competition with the BEFTA Awards. So how would you? I think my discipline and forthrightness is what um, helps me to succeed. Because, you know, I, I believe in saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Um, I'm in office every day at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I leave office every day at 7, 7.30 in the evening. So I think dedication is key to making anything of your life, um, particularly in business, you need to have dedication and be disciplined. Um, so I think that was you know, two of the main attributes that allowed us to get this award. What's your sort of target audience? I know it's Caribbeans and um, Africans, but you know, sort of age group, what sort of audience do you guys target? We, um, we target principally the, the Caribbean, the global Caribbean market. Um, age range from between 18 to 70 years of age. So we're talking about school leavers, um, 
uh, school students, university students, entrepreneurs, captains of industry, um, and also people who have an interest in the Caribbean. So they might not necessarily be Caribbeans themselves, yeah. but they could be Africans who have Caribbean relatives and friends. They could be world people who have an interest in the Caribbean, Japanese or what have you. Yeah. So, so that is basically how we look at our audience. What are the challenges in terms of getting young people to engage with CaribDirect.com? There are quite a few challenges, actually, um, because as you can see, I am not a youngster myself, so I, I don't see things in the way youngsters do. But one of the things I mentioned earlier is partnerships. We have a partnership with the Westminster Kingsway College, um, and we have writers from them. There, there are a couple of, of, of people, even on the, the lecture staff, that write articles, and they filter it through to the student body. Um, outside of that, I mentioned also that there is um, CDM Entertainment Promotions. That is basically focused at the young Caribbean, African Caribbean youngsters in the UK. And we put on what we call FETs in the Caribbean, um, which are particularly of interest to youngsters, Soka FETs, Calypso FETs, and so forth. Um, some of the seminars that we do to have a slight slant towards younger people of um, interest in business or entrepreneurs themselves. So that, that helps get us to get people looking at the site of that age group. And we're continually looking for opportunities to do that. The pageantry business in the African and Caribbean community in Britain has been around for more than 25 years and is represented by many African and Caribbean countries. But never before has one been dedicated to the mothers and grandmothers of the community. We caught up with visionary Lorraine Williams, founder and director of Miss Share Elegance, for a chat about her new creation. Miss Share Elegance is a part of my dream. If, if I wasn't doing it, I would have loved to take part in something like this because of uh, the age group of ladies 50 plus. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything for ladies 50 plus. So I came up with the idea thinking that the ladies out there feel the same, would like to dress up and feel glamorous. So that's why I decided to, you know, do it just uh, ladies of our age group to do something. You say, you know, you want to give back to the women of 50 plus. What sort of things would you like to give back I to? just want them to feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've been through breast cancer myself. Okay. I'm not the only, you know, lady who's been through that. And I've pulled myself together okay. and uh, had all my treatments and I feel good about myself. So um, I totally encourage your nationality to take part, no matter how you're tall. Right. Slim, it doesn't matter what size you are, sheer elegance will be there for you. Right. I know you were a mentor for Miss Guy in the UK, so um, did you mentor any of your contestants this year for Miss Sheer Elegance? Every Sunday, every Sunday I would say I mentor. Yeah. Every Sunday, as I said, I, I, I was there doing everything with them. Right. You know, so the things that... Um, sheer elegance was just all about fun. And I said to them, ladies, you come every Sunday for rehearsals, just come and do your thing and, right. you know, just make sure comedy heals every Sunday. Don't forget that, please. That was very important. <laughs> what other? So every Sunday, as I said, you know, I, I not put them through their paces, but right. make them feel relaxed and say, look, this is girls just having some fun. Right. That's all it was all about. Okay, and what was the most um, difficult obstacle that you had while you were taking part? The girls now. <laughs> <laughs> Walking in, how many, how many, how many inches, Lorraine? <laughs> <laughs> Walking in a three-inch heel shoe. Oh, that right. was my only challenge. Not bad. No, that was it. Everything else was fine. So I take you're not accustomed to, you know, walking in heels uh, and stuff. No, it's not uh, your thing. Well, yes, thirty odd years ago, before I had my, <laughs> before I had my children, yes. Okay. But um. I, uh, yeah, the, my challenge was walking in a straight line right. in three inch. Okay, and tell sure. me a little bit about your um, your trophy. Oh, my trophy I won for Miss Shining Star. I think so for projecting confidence. Right. Because I'm a very private person. Okay. I did not come to the pageant to take part. I came to help her promote it. Okay, so what inspired you? Um, we haven't got anything like this in our community. Right. And I just thought, as Lorraine said earlier, we need to highlight us as women, even though we're 50. Yes. Society doesn't acknowledge us. Mm -hmm. We're seen as somebody too old to do anything. Right. And um, this gives you the opportunity to regain your confidence you had before yes. 50, because 
being that age, you do mentally and physically, you do change. Yes. And some people um, are affected by it in a negative way. Right. You know, their spirits, their physiques, their mental way of thinking, they, it, it hurts. And with this, you regain the confidence that you have. You're surrounded by friends and people who are in a similar age to you. Yes. And it just makes you feel different. Mm -hmm. You go out the street and you walk different. Right. I'm because, different. yes, because you just felt it's, it's a, a moving experience. Right. Right. You, know, you go out there, you might be in your jeans or you might be in your tracksuit. Inside, you're feeling so good about yourself. And when you change into your lovely attire, yes. it just shines wholeheartedly. Physically, you walk yes. different. On your face, facial expression, you're different. Yes. You just feel so good about yourself to know that you appreciated and there's like-minded people that you're with. Yeah, so you gain a lot from the pageant then. Oh, yes. Right, right. Yeah. Congratulations on being first runner-up. Thank you. So um, tell me about your experience. Well, it was, um, for me, a life experience. It's something that, it's an unusual experience. Um, it's one that's, that can never be forgotten. I can understand, I can understand. So, um, I see you have two trophies on your lap. Can you tell me a bit more about them? Yeah, this one I got for second runner-up, as you know. Um, first runner-up, runner yes, for okay. the um, crown. And this one was an amazing award for me. It's, um, I don't know how they saw it, but it, it's a best personality award. And um, I've been told this is not an easy award to achieve. I was elated to have received this um, because it speaks volumes about what people see on the inside right. more than what they see on the outside. And um, I was just really honored to have received this and know that who I really am, yes. you know, what I'm about has been identified and acknowledged. And this is a treasure. <laughs> this is a treasure because it talks about the inside. Okay, so as a young person myself, you know, and taking part in pageants and stuff, I mean, I understand that beauty is in the, in the eyes of the beholder, but how do you think the outside world would take on, you know, your view on beauty and the 50 plus women? Well, sheer elegance is not about beauty, right? Beauty is in the inside to me at the end of the day. And I'm not looking for beautiful women or whatever. I'll make them look glamorous, yes. But we're not really saying, oh, you've got to be beautiful, you've got to be slim, you've got to be whatever. I know Miss Elegance, 50 plus, the ladies are size 14 up, you know, and I'm not saying they have a Coca-Cola bottle figure, mm -hmm. but um, once they have their rehearsals and, you know, every week, they, they will feel good about themselves. And mm -hmm. so it's not really a beauty thing. It's just the way you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. And what's inside will show outside. And what is the sort of the message that you're trying to um, send out about your pageant and to the women, the 50 plus women in our community? Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Elegance is about you being confident mm -hmm. in yourself. I'm encouraging ladies that some ladies don't have no confidence. And uh, as I said to them, you know, once you take part in Miss Elegance, you will be surprised what you have inside that, you know, and they will want to encourage their friends to take part because, as I said, it's not about beauty, it's about you being yourself mm. and, um, and showing the younger people that you can still look good and feel good over 50. Mm. So, Miss Elegance is 50 to 100 or, or, or older than that. Mm. And you could, we could, well, Sheer Elegance is all about making you bring out your confidence and making you feel good about yourself. Very good. And then, um, if people want to, you know, contact you and find out more about Miss Sheer Elegance, how would they be able yeah. to do so? Mm -hmm. Yes, on Facebook, there's uh, Miss Elegance or Sheer Elegance Elegance. Just go on Facebook and add us as a friend. And if you want to do take part, just let me know. Inbox me all your details and I'll get back to you. This has been another edition of Carib Direct Diaspora News in Brief. Join us next time for more news, commentaries and exciting interviews to keep you informed. <laughs>